Let's first look at how law of cosines is derived. For an arbitrary oblique triangle like this one, we can draw a height from point A to its base side A. And this height divides our base side A into two segments. And based on our knowledge of trigonometry, we know that the length of the first segment is C times cosine B, and the length of the second segment is B times cosine C. And these two segments, when added together, equals to A. Therefore, we can write this equation, A equals to C times cosine B plus B times cosine C. And we can multiply this equation by A. And let's call it equation number one. And we can draw the other two heights from angle B to base side B and from angle C to base side C and derive similar equations. Let's call them equation two and equation three. Now, let's take the first equation minus the second one and minus the third one. Therefore, on the left-hand side, we have a squared minus b squared minus c squared. And on the right-hand side, we have negative 2bc times cosine a. ac cosine b and ab cosine c are both canceled out. Similarly, if we take equation 2 minus equation 1 minus equation 3, we get this equation. And lastly, if we take equation 3 minus 1 minus 2, we get this equation. And let's reorganize these three equations. And as a result, we get a set of three equations that are known as law of cosines. Please pay attention to these three equations and notice the symmetry in these three equations. And also notice the similarity between them and the Pythagorean theorem that you are very familiar with. And hopefully that will help you memorize these three equations. From these three equations, we can solve for cosine A, cosine B, and cosine C respectively as expressions of the three sides A, B, and C. And that is known as the alternative form of law of cosines. And as you can see, from the alternative form of law of cosines, we can solve for the angles if we know the three sides. One of the advantages of applying law of cosines is that, once again, if you recall, the inverse cosine function has a range between 0 and pi which means that if you use your calculator to evaluate an angle using the inverse cosine function, you will be able to get the result of an obtuse angle. And also, for two angles, an acute angle, theta prime, with terminal side belonging to the first quadrant, and an obtuse angle, theta, with the terminal side belonging to the second quadrant, their cosine values would not be the same. The acute angle will have a positive cosine value, and the obtuse angle will have a negative cosine value. Therefore, there is no confusion when applying law of cosines, unlike when applying law of sines. Let's look at this example. In this triangle, we know two sides, A and B, and the angle C that is between these two sides. Therefore, this is the case of side angle side SAS and again we need to solve for the remaining side and the remaining two angles. Now as you can tell we do not know any pair of parameters therefore we cannot apply law of sines so we have to apply law of cosines. If you recall this is one of the three equations of law of cosines and because we know both lengths A and B, and we know angle C. Therefore, we can substitute the information in and solve for C squared to be 20.2. Take the square root of that. Length C is approximately 4.5. At this point, you might realize that we now do know a pair of parameters. We know side C and angle C. It seems that we can apply law of sines from this point on. 
That is true. However, notice how angle B looks like an obtuse angle. Therefore, to avoid confusion, let's still stick with law of cosines. We're going to use this alternative form of law of cosines. And since we know all three sides, A, B, and C, we're going to substitute in the information and calculate cosine B to be negative 0 0.344. And negative sign indicates that angle B is indeed obtuse. And now we can use the calculator directly to evaluate angle B using the inverse cosine function and get angle B equals to 110 degree. Unlike when we apply law of sines, we have to apply our own judgment to decide if the angle is obtuse or acute. This case, when we apply law of cosines, we naturally know for sure that this angle is obtuse. Now, with two out of three angles known from this triangle, the remaining third angle, angle A, can be easily determined as 180 degree minus angle B minus C to be 42 degree. And now this triangle is fully solved. Let's look at the last situation. For this example, we know the three sides of the triangle. So this is an SSS situation and we need to solve for the angles. Now, since we do not know any angle, therefore we do not have any pair of parameters. Therefore, we cannot apply law of sines. We must start with the alternative form of law of cosines to solve for the angles. The question is, which angle do we start with? Or does it matter? Rule of thumb is we should start with solving the biggest angle. The reason, again, is because of the advantage of applying law of cosines to calculate obtuse angles. Now, for any triangle, if there is an obtuse angle, there should be only one, and that angle must be the biggest angle in this triangle. And that's how we're going to start with the biggest angle. Now, how do we know which angle is the largest? Remember, the longest side always faces the largest angle. Therefore, in this triangle, out of the three sides, we know that side A, which equals to five, is the longest. Therefore, angle A must be the largest angle. And if there is an obtuse angle in this triangle, it must be angle A. And that's what we are going to start with. Therefore, we write the alternative form of law of cosines for angle A, substitute in sides A, B, and C, and calculate cosine A to be negative, again, indication that angle A is indeed an obtuse angle, and we can use the calculator to evaluate angle A directly using the inverse cosine function, and angle A is 94.6 degree. Now, you can continue to use law of cosines to solve for another angle. However, we do know a pair of parameters now. We know angle A and side A. And angle B and angle C are the smaller two angles. It is impossible for either one of them to be obtuse. They must be both acute angles. Therefore, at this point, if you wish to, we can apply law of sines instead. So we calculate this ratio equate that to say B over sine angle B and solve for angle B to be 28.6 degree. And now we know two out of three of the angles. The last angle is simply 180 degree minus the other two, which is 56.8 degree. And now we have fully solved this triangle. Let's look at this example. We need to determine the area of this triangle. And as you probably noticed, this is the same triangle that we worked on earlier. Now we've learned law of sines and law of cosines. We can solve for all six parameters of this triangle. Therefore, we can easily determine the length of any height in this triangle. Like in this case, height HA equals to C times sine B, which is 
2.01. And the area of the triangle, as we know from a long time ago, is one half base times height, which in this case is 5.03.